Good evening, everyone. Time for another silver update. We're looking at the daily chart of silver. Goes back to June of 2021, or is that 2022? Yeah, June of 2021. And the indicator that we're running here is the MACD. So you can see that the MACD is looking like it's going to roll over to the upside. And that's pretty bullish. The whole thing looks pretty bullish considering that we had a pretty big correction from that 32, was it 32.50 we got to? Yeah, roughly 32.50. So as far as the trending on the MACD, it's pretty good. Um, you know, you can see we got a buy signal here and a couple here. And then starting at this buy signal, that one's good. Another one here, that one's good. Another one here, that one's good. And if we get one here, then that is really a confirmation that we are in a rising market. You can see that the indicator has set to a lower level, it's around. It's below the zero line and it's rounding up now. You can also look at these bars here. As the bars get smaller and smaller, it begins to approach that crossover as it did right here. So the indicator is reset at a lower level than it was here, but the price here is much lower than it is here. So if we get a reset, it looks really good. Um, I would expect if this indicator crosses through to the upside, we probably will cross through 30. It'll be about the timing uh, as we cross through that 30 price, we'll also cross through this downtrending line on this pretty, pretty decent pennant formation. So I'm thinking that we are still in, now I did, re, I did redraw this trend line here. I did have it drawn from here and up to here. I redrew it here, but still everything's looking pretty good. Uh, so I'm guesstimating, since this is the daily, I'm expecting a resolution of this move by July 15th or so. I would expect to see by July 15th either crossover to the upside on this indicator and a resulting price move or a failure of this indicator and a continuation down. And that would be a break of this trend line and a break of the 28 price. We'd probably send this back to 26. So by July 15th is my guesstimate. So before looking at the story of the night, I want to look at a couple stocks here. Of course, our high flyers, Microsoft, you can see just going up, up and away. Uh, Apple. Same thing. Still very bullish chart, still rising. Seems to be overextended, but not looking back. Amazon. Now, I don't have NVIDIA on here, but apparently NVIDIA has taken a pause. So let's look at Bitcoin. It uh, it had it, it was coming down to this trend line, and it came down to it, didn't touch it, and it bounced pretty hard. You can see we got a low of about fifty eight thousand five hundred or so. And we bounced up, we're back up to sixty two thousand. But on the daily, we still on the daily. No, we're on the weekly. On the weekly, we definitely seem to be rolling over. It looks it looks very toppy. We'll pull it back into the daily. And the daily looks like it wants to cross over to the upside. So it's hard to say. Now, what's going to happen to the price of cryptocurrencies during a depression? I watched Doug Casey just recently, and he's forecasting now a depression worse than the Great Depression. 
And I talked about, you know, protection during default and the precious metals. Uh, they're really the only place to hide during a deflationary default. But I wanted to look at, so um, talking about these stocks, they're still going up, but the market is narrowing. And we're going to take a look at Walgreens and just see how bad the retail space is. But the NASDAQ itself, uh, this indicator is actually, you rarely see this, we're forming a, a rising pennant in the indicator itself, probably will break to the upside. But uh, yeah, it's crazy times. So I wanted to cover this Walgreens story because uh, I had first heard that Walgreens was going to shutter half their stores. Apparently they're going to shut 20, shutter 25%. Walgreens plans to shut up to 25% of its retail stores that are unprofitable. CEO Tim Wentworth said June 27th during the business Q3 earnings call. Walgreens stores drive $27 billion of retail sales, Wentworth said. But the customers involved, demographics, and preferences have shifted and we need to reposition and operate our stores accordingly, Wentworth said. Currently, 75% of our U.S. stores contribute Roughly 100% of segment AOI adjusted operating income for the remaining 25% of stores in our network, which are not currently contributing to our long-term strategy, changes are imminent. This will include, he said, the closure of a significant portion of these underperforming stores over the next three years. Walgreens Boot Alliance Gap net loss was $5.6 billion for the nine months ending May 31st compared with a loss of $2.9 billion in the first nine months of fiscal 2023. Now, that's a big number. $5.6 billion loss. Uh, we're going to come back to these stats here, but just looking at the stats, uh, Walgreens' market cap is only $10 billion dollars. They lost more than $5 billion. Is this company going to go bankrupt? I mean, that's pretty darn scary. But let's get back to the news, and then I want to show you some interesting things about this. And it talks about why it matters and revenue from prescription drugs, the script market, etc. So... I did a little digging here, and first of all, let's pull up the Walgreens chart. So if, if Walgreens is any indicator of the retail sector, this is positively ugly. You can see a high in, in 2016 of almost 100 bucks, 97 or so. We're down at 11.58. This price is lower than the 2020 low, the Great Recession, the dot-com bust. I mean, we're back to prices that we were at in the mid-90s. So this is a really, really ugly chart. And looking at the... Sorry, uh, I took that into a new window. But I pulled up a list of the closures and the current list that they're, uh, that now they're going to be closing stores over the next three years. But here's a list of 91 stores now. I think they operate about 8,000 something stores. So we're talking about a total of 2,000 stores are going to be closing over the next three years. But looking at this list, what I started to wonder is, is there any reason, you know, they say unprofitable stores, but do we have a problem with crime, looting, things like that? Because that's what we've seen in California. Now, I did the count on these stores, and I think there were two in California and then as a sample, I looked at 
how many were closing in Oregon. Out of these 91 stores, four stores are closing in Oregon. So here's a list of Walgreens stores by state. So you can see if you pull up Oregon, you've got, I don't know, just a rough guess, I don't know, maybe 50, 50 stores. So almost 10% of the stores they're closing. Now, if you go back to the list, and I just did for comparison purposes, Texas. And if you look at the number of stores they're closing in Texas in this sample, they're only closing two stores in Texas. And if you look at the state of Texas, keep this in mind of what you're looking at with Oregon. You look at the state of Texas, here's the Walgreens stores in Texas. That's what, five, six, seven times the number of stores, yet only two stores are closing in Texas. One was in Lubbock and the other was in Houston. Lubbock is one of the worst places for crime in Texas and Houston is really, really bad. But all these other stores are not, are not closing. So is there something going on behind the scenes related to crime and the punishment of crime? Maybe. California only had two stores as well, but I'm not sure if California has as many stores as Texas. It looks pretty close. It looks like a tie. So what's going on in Oregon? I can't say. But looking at the financials, it's pretty darn scary. Now, Walgreens doesn't have a lot of debt. I mean, they have... You know, they do $145 billion in revenue. But they have $33 billion in debt, but they're only worth $10 billion. And what is their cost for their real estate? I don't know what the cost is. I would have to dig further. But you would think with a revenue of $145 billion and they show a 5 Point eight billion dollar loss in net income. Wow, something's going on. I don't know if this debt is high interest or if the real estate is upside down, but so back to this issue, if we think about Walgreens closing that many stores, not only is that a lot of jobs lost, you're talking about like 2,000 store, 2,000 plus stores, the employees that are involved with those. But what about all that commercial real estate? Now, a lot of people have done walkthroughs of certain cities in California. Um, you can look at all the sh shuttering going on in San Francisco, Los Angeles, um, we're seeing in commercial real estate, we're seeing stuff self, at, some of them we've seen as big as a 90% loss from back in 2019. So what is this gonna add to commercial real estate losses? And then maybe the banks, I don't know. So that's a pretty shocking, um, pretty shocking set of facts that a company like Walgreens is gonna be closing a quarter of their stores uh, commercial real estate is ugly and it's getting uglier and you know Doug Casey may be right we may be headed for a depression now that's not at all shown in the stock market the stock market is just high flying here's the S&P 500 uh, let's pull up the Wilshire 5000 that's a bigger index again just high flying so we're not seeing any indicators yet that stocks are going to crash but they could um, the other thing that was kind of of note today was the 10-year note uh, you can see we've got a pretty good bounce off the trend line on the 10-year puts us at four and a half percent 
the resistance is way up here at five and five percent was something that we were at uh, we hit it back in 2006 and we hit it again in 2007 and then we got the long downtrend of the financial crisis and then we went even lower in 2020 and then we got that big huge uh, raise in fed rates so five percent on the 10-year is the big number that we're looking at if we get through that let's pull it out to the monthly to see so the monthly is looking very toppy but it's not uh, it's toppy in the indicator but it is kind of resetting we could we could easily see a turn up here and a breakthrough above five percent and that a breakthrough above five percent is going to put us back into mid to early 90s and then even back into 80s so let's just jump over to the 30-year bond and you can see unfortunately we don't have it back to the 80s but uh, that's a, a long long bull market in bonds and ended pretty abruptly uh, pulling out to the weekly you can see uh, we, we cut through a trend line but we're not really able to rally indicator is sort of around the zero area so we can't say for sure but that's a big drop in the bond market we're talking about the 30-year bond hit 190 and is now at 116 so that is a huge loss in bonds now i don't i don't believe there are many 30 years out there i think the fed moved away from that i don't know how many there are still denominated but clearly since 2020 those bonds have lost uh, we're talking 40 percent of their value those 30-year bonds so that points to how the fed is is going to handle interest rates the two-year two year is kind of indecisive as well we just don't know what's going to happen so to sum it all up some of these things are looking fairly bearish for the economy i think anecdotally if you look on tiktok and look on youtube people in various professions are talking about how difficult it is to get a job right now it has to be anecdotal because we just can't believe anything the government says but this walgreens closure uh, that's pretty disturbing. And if we start to see more of these, if we start to see CVS, Rite Aid, uh, other stores start to close down, then yeah, uh, that Doug Casey prediction that we may be looking at a depression, that could be, could be what we're looking at. And they, they could always pull the plug. They can pull the plug at any time. And like I've always say, uh, whether we go into a hyperinflationary blowout or we go into a deflationary debt default, the best place to be is precious metals and the best precious metal you can buy is silver. We'll talk to you next time.